One of the most common pieces of feedback I hear from people who are taking on learning the violin is that the bow is by far the hardest part. And I would absolutely agree. There are so many tiny little details involved in mastering bow technique, including one that is often overlooked. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lauren, a professional violinist and fiddle player living in Nashville, Tennessee, and I help thousands of people achieve their violin and fiddle goals. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. So chances are when you were first learning how to hold the bow, you probably heard things like rounded pinky, bent thumb, keep the two middle fingers together, things of that nature. And all of these instructions are very useful in developing a solid basic bow hold. We're talking about the fingers, we're talking about the hand shape, we're making sure that there's an openness inside the hand. All of these things are really, really good. But one thing that is often not discussed, at least until much later in violin studies, is the relationship between the arm and the bow hand. So oftentimes we focus on just what's happening with the hand and the fingers and then we play and then we're not happy with the way that it sounds but we don't really know how to fix it. So what I'm here to share with you today is that if you can start to pay attention to the relationship between your bow arm and bow hand, you can really determine the outcome of your playing, whether you have a nice strong tone or whether you have a weak and scratchy tone when you play. So if you take a look at my bow hold now, you'll notice that all of the fingers are in the correct location, the thumb is bent, everything is looking like it's where it should be. But the problem here with this picture is that my fingers are almost fully extended. There's not a lot of give within my fingers. There's some strain happening along the side of my hand. You might be seeing some tension there. And the reason for this is that my wrist and knuckles are significantly higher than the level of my fingers. If we lower everything, you notice that there's a major change in the way that my bow hold now appears. So instead of being up here where we're fully extended and there's not a lot of flexibility there, if you're playing in this position, you are limiting yourself in terms of bow control and you don't have a lot to work with. In terms of transitions, they might be a little bit choppy. You might be hitting multiple strings at once unintentionally, and it's overall just gonna feel pretty stiff. So if you can manage to simply lower the wrist, lower the knuckles, notice how I'm not dropping my elbow or my arm, I'm just focusing in on the wrist and these knuckles here. Keep everything nice and relaxed, drop down, into the bow, really allow your fingers to settle into the stick of the bow, that's gonna make all of the difference. And you'll notice when you play, you'll have a lot more flexibility, which enables you to control the bow a lot better, allowing you to control your tone and maybe even incorporate some new fiddle techniques that you weren't able to do before. And it really just makes life so much easier as a violinist and a fiddle player. So to give you an example, if I were to go into playing position and I had my bow hold set up and my wrist and my knuckles were in this high position, again, there's not a lot of movement happening. I don't really have flexibility. I feel very strained and I feel very stiff and I feel like there's not a lot of movement that's able to occur. Whereas if I'm able to while my bow is on the string and I have it resting on the A string, if I'm able to drop my wrist and drop my knuckles and just simply lower everything and really settle into the bow, now I can really feel the connection of my fingers to the bow and of the bow to the string. <laughs> And suddenly the transitions become so much smoother, everything feels much more natural, and I'm really able to get that nice rich tone that all of us are after. So if you can manage to drop your wrist, drop your knuckles into the bow, that'll make things so much easier. So I really hope that was helpful. I hope you can now use that technique in your own playing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Happy practicing. 
If you've made it this far, you must have enjoyed the video, so why not check out this one next? Also, if you'd like exclusive content from the Tune Project and a more personalized experience, head over to Patreon and join our wonderful little fiddle community. Your support helps me to continue to grow as a creator and ensures that I'm able to continue to provide free educational content here on YouTube. Thank you!